Today we are gonna keep working on this 2007 STI that we recently picked up about two to three weeks ago. The car, we got it with a blown up engine. It was probably one of the most poorly assembled STIs that I have torn down, but we are here to fix that. We're gonna give this thing a new shot at life and give it, I don't know where I'm going with this, man. We're gonna fix it, all right? We're, we're, we're gonna make it work. In the last video, we went through, we swapped out all of the suspension. Well, we didn't swap out all the suspensions. We swapped out all the shocks on the car for a set of BCBR coilovers. We got rid of the old crusty OEM rotors. We threw some new faction fab ones on there. We got some faction fab stainless steel brake lines on there. We're waiting for our brake pads to come in, but it's obviously not going anywhere right now. Today, I wanna to focus on the short block of the car. So this is a fresh, brand new 2018 plus STI type RA short block. The only main difference between these is like a redesigned piston, it's not crazy different, but we have made some decent power on these. In my old 05 STI, we were running an RA block and we were making 460 wheel on pump gas, reliably with an FP black and I think it was ID 1300 injectors. It was, it was a great setup. Although the casting on this one, like Subaru, what the hell man? That's rough, that's like sandpaper rough. So to get this thing prepped and ready, we have a lot of stuff that we gotta get going on this engine. Over here on the table, we've got a beautiful Killer Bee oil pan, Company 23 sent over their water pump and their timing belt kit down there, which we'll get to at a later date. We've got an OEM 11 millimeter Subaru oil pump, which we're gonna take apart, pack, and red lock, tight down all the screws, because those are prone to backing out. We got a brand new OEM STI oil cooler, tall boy oil filter, pickup, windage tray, and a whole bunch of other stuff that we're gonna be going. So to start things off, let's go ahead and get this oil pump opened up. Let's get it torn apart. So right here we have our OEM 11 mil oil pump. We'll go ahead and get this thing opened up here. These five screws here, we're gonna go ahead and need to take them off. You are going to need an impact driver if you're gonna do this. An impact driver is essentially a screwdriver that you can hit with a hammer to expel a lot of force to open these guys up. Now we can take the backing plate off. Doing this, all this does is just help the pump build pressure on startup. You can see some of it seeping out, which is fine. We mainly just wanna start getting some in here so that way it starts to pack it out a little bit. Now that we've got some oil in there, we can go ahead and get this guy back on. So we're just gonna set the, set the rotor plate back on there. We're gonna start putting these in one by one, but we are gonna add red Loctite to them so that way these do not back out in the future. Now we can push this guy on. Free tool for this to make life nice and easy. Went ahead and threw on the crank sprocket and a brand new out of the box crank position sensor because I had like three extra ones sitting around. So we got a crank sensor in, the gear on. So now let's jump over to the oil pan. Let's just seal up the bottom of the motor.
we've got a lot of stuff going on on our short block now. We've got our OEM STI oil cooler bolted up here with a tall boy filter, brand new crossover tube because these things get gross and rusty, new hoses, new clamps. We have our company 23 water pump, which they put a nice little logo down there on it. Uh, OEM STI thermostat, OEM crossover or uh, outlet guy there. So looks pretty good. We have more to put on here though. What are you doing? Hi. Hi, honey. Do you want to help put the engine together? Do you want to put the other headsets in? I'll let you put them in if you want. You're the one who said you were starving, not me. Look at that, Momo. Head stud. Head stud. Look at all these fun head studs, Mochi. What do you need? So it has been a few days since we touched on the short block and touched on the 07. I went to a car show, I'm not a big fan of car shows, but I took the STI over to one. There's some cool cars there. I met a lot of you guys, which was really cool and it was fun. So it was nice to get out for that. I also had to finish up a customer car, which is getting picked up tonight. So I have a couple hours here at the shop and I want to get going on the Hawkeye. I'm still waiting on some parts to come in. I can't do anything else to this engine until we get our cylinder head situation figured out. So that is in the works. But for now, I want to start cleaning up this chassis a little bit. There are a ton of stickers in the engine bay. There's a ton of like old oil, grease, and grime that has just spilled everywhere in there. So I want to get this thing out. I want to pressure wash it. I want to clean up the engine bay so that way when we're working in there, it's just a nice clean environment. I don't like just digging around in nastiness, if you know what I mean. So we'll come up in here, mask up any electrical connections that need to be masked up, like the engine harness, a couple other electrical connectors in here brake booster, things like that. And then we're gonna heavily clean in here to get all this nasty grease, grime, and crap out. Clean up the bell housing a little bit more and just make this an engine bay that we're okay working in.
engine bay is looking way cleaner. It's not perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect. I don't want it to be perfect because then I'm not gonna wanna like take this thing out and abuse it and have fun with it. But it's to the point where there's no more grease, grime, nastiness everywhere up in the engine bay. All of the old stickers that were in here are now all gone and off. I do need to take that off and throw that away also, but we'll do that here in a minute. Next up, I gotta do something that I'm really not looking forward to. So this car's been sitting for an undisclosed amount of time. I don't know how long that is. There's some fuel in the fuel tank. We need to get that out. We don't know how old it is. Um, stagnant gas can make a car run like crap. And on a first startup on a fresh engine, when we get that engine in there, I don't want it to run like sort of booty hole. So what we're gonna have to do is pull out the fuel hanger assembly. We're gonna have to modify that anyways. We're putting in a single wall bureau 450 in this car. I need to add a stud kit, which I just ordered from Radium today. Uh, we need to build a, we have to hardwire the fuel pump with a relay, which I'll do. I'll build a harness for it. I don't know why I was having so much trouble thinking of that. So what we need to do right now is go ahead and since I have the back seats already out, pop in here, take out this whole paneling system in the back seat, get down to the fuel pump assembly, pull it out, and then start draining out all the old fuel. So. Pop out the electrical connection. Dude, these things do not want to let go today. This one does not want to come off. It's just one fuel line. It just won't fucking let go. What the sh You f son of a bitch. You f Oh my god, there we fing go. It broke the clamp. Hopefully that still seals back up for us. Well, with a lot of cursing, we got our fuel pump hanger out. Came with an AEM 340. Don't know how old it is. This does look a little bit faded, but it does still look relatively new. Uh, we're still gonna be swapping that out for our Wall Bureau 450 and doing a stud kit in here. We'll do that in the next video. So I'm gonna let this just kind of chill right here to off gas and get any like fuel smell off, off of it. In the fuel tank, we do have some old fuel. I don't know how old it is, but there's some fuel in there. It smells absolutely terrible. So I'm gonna grab a transfer pump and start pulling out as much of that fuel as we can and start getting it in a container so that way I can dispose of it later. So I've got my this little like fluid transfer pump I got from Harbor Freight. It gets the job done for the most part when it wants to work, but sometimes it doesn't want to work and it just decides to pee everywhere. So we'll see. All right, well, doing something. Oh, all right, let's try not to spray myself with fuel again. That would be pretty neat. 10 out of 10, do not recommend that fuel transfer pump, man. It just pees fuel fucking everywhere, all the time. Ben's been working on a Veloster, and I've come to realize these things are just getting weird in all sorts. <laughs> you got a rain guard on a window that doesn't roll down. Don't understand. Eco mode. And it gets louder. Will it shoot fire? Why does this thing got so much kick to it? Oh dude, the seats are actually not that bad. Those look pretty comfy. It led up to it. I just don't understand the whole three door thing on these. <laughs> That's a little bit weird. This thing got launch control? Probably. What? Super fast shifting. Is, Is that, that an auto? auto? Maybe, hold on. Hold down the gas and the brake. Nothing? do this is there anybody in the comments who has a veloster n how do we use launch control because this makes no sense we've set it up in the n options we put it in n mode and turned off all the traction controls and we see we even set the launch control and nothing activate 
Traction and stabil stability control disabled. Brake in. That's so lame. How many dudes does it take to figure out a launch control? Dude, it's so slow to accelerate too. Put you know, down. It's so that you smash your foot all the way down like you would do for normal launch control, and the RPM. Uh, that's just normal. That was just red line, wasn't it? I was about to say, damn, he got it, dude. You slam your foot and it's like uh, so slowly. Yo, see if you can actually launch it. I don't want to break none. <laughs> what, what's gonna break? Just let go of the brake. Let go of the brake. Everyone's like, let go of the brake. Let go of the brake. Like, launch it. You get it. <laughs> That's oh. how it works. You have to let go. Oh. Kind of whack. It doesn't build enough boost, like to. No. And it did a small burnout. So that's pretty much all I have time for here at the shop today anyways. Things should start to slow back down for me a little bit more so that way I can focus on getting the builds done and continue shooting some videos. I apologize for the lack of videos the past couple days. It's just like I said, I've been pulled like nine different directions the past few days. So we're gonna start getting back to the normal schedule. We are in like, I guess you could call it a build battle with Remy. We're doing his 07 STI versus my 07 STI. We're doing four challenges. Uh, drag racing, road racing, snow racing, and then we are also going to be doing a road trip from where we're at in Washington over to Utah, because I promised we'd go to Utah in August and that ended up getting canceled. So we're gonna go from Washington, Utah, Iowa, down to Texas, California, then back up to Washington. So out of those four challenges, we don't know what the loser's gonna have to do yet. People are saying sell the cars, donate the cars, do something like that. Like that's just financially not a smart decision for us to do. So we're still figuring out what to have the loser do, but they're gonna be very similar builds. They're both RA short block. There's just small differences between each engine setup. It's not necessarily about whose car makes more power, but whose car is gonna win the challenges. We're still figuring it out, but I think it'll be a fun time. Somebody called me a garage princess and I agree. I don't get out of the garage much, so. Ah, let me get the RX-7 pushed back in. Oh, RX-7. I'm gonna get the RX-7 pushed back in here, but after seeing what everyone was saying in the last video, here's my compromise for you guys. We'll run the rotary that's in the RX-7 until it dies, then after that I'm LS swapping it, or swapping it with something, so. I'll compromise, we'll run the rotary for now until it dies, but I'm not paying rotary money to rebuild that thing again. If it dies, then we're moving on to a better platform. So, let's get out of here. Let's go deliver a customer car. It's always fun. Customer came and picked up his 05 STI, so that is back in his hands. He seemed happy to have a car that's not doing the, the good old Roddy knocks anymore. And as of this morning, I just got my carbon fiber trunk in for the STI, so we'll get that, we'll get that thrown on in the next video, as well as the radium stud kit for our fuel pump on our 07. So, pretty good progress. I do have a little bit of bad news. Our heads are about four to five weeks out for the 07. Castings are on back order. So we just went with a set of IAG, uh, I think they're their 500 series for 550 series, something. It's like their stage one head package. So GSC cams, valves, springs, retainers, whole kink caboodle, uh, but they're just on back order since our OEM ones that we pulled off of that 07 are scrap, unfortunately, and castings are on back order. So it's just the way things go right now. For this little princess here, I have an AccuSump on the way that I ordered. It's a two quart AccuSump um, that we're gonna have to find a home for, feed it to the engine so that way it's got a dash 10 feed line. And all the AccuSump is gonna do is keep two quarts of oil in the sump and it just regulates pressure with the engine. So if the engine goes down in pressure, it'll push engine into the oil to bump pressure back up. And as the engine comes back up in oil pressure, it'll push oil back into the canister to get oil pressure back up. So it's not, 100% fail safe, but it is a precautionary thing to have installed in there. I also got in our poured in and shimmed 11 millimeter pump from out front motorsports. So we're gonna be swapping this pump out uh, and pulling the 12 mil off. We are gonna have to drop the subframe from underneath of this thing so that way I can take the oil pan off and get the, the baffle out of the oil pan because that is probably one of the bigger reasons as to why we are dropping oil pressure. And then the other thing that I'm adding in just as a precautionary thing is an oil cooler, which is gonna go all up in here in the front grill. It's gonna be 26 inches long by six inches high. I've already found the core from Setrab. It's a little bit pricey, but for oil temps to maintain stability, we kind of need it. When I took the STI to the car show the other weekend, I finally got my oil temp sensor set up properly and reading properly. And I was noticing oil temperatures of about 230 degrees of just like driving. That's not getting on the car hard. 
that's not doing anything like crazy. That's just operating temperature for the oil on 2050 being 230 degrees. So oil cooler is absolutely necessary. So we're gonna get all of these oil modifications in and then just do them all. So for the meantime, I'll continue to drive the car around sub 5K RPM and just enjoy it. But for now, that's all I got for you guys on this one. We got some 23 WRX stuff coming up uh, while we wait for some of the parts to come in for the 07. And we got some stuff with this thing coming up also, which I'm not gonna tear into the oiling stuff until we have it all here because I would rather just do it all at once. So with that, that's all I got for you guys on this one video. Normal video schedule should be coming up again um, starting now, hopefully, as long as like nothing crazy else comes up anymore. But with that, that's all I got for you guys on this one. So if you like the video, you know what to do. Go to hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, cyan, whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be able to fit in one of these corners, no idea which one quite yet. But with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.